Hello everybody and welcome to Getting Wrecked and today we're going to talk about the billions. So this is my strategy guide or tips and tricks for how to survive in the early access. We are talking about uh, the version 0 0.5 and I'm going to talk about the macro game. I'm not going to focus too much on details because it's a bit like this if you give a man a fish, you will feed him for a day, teach him to fish, and he will be fed, fed for a lifetime. That's how I'm looking at this. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So we will talk about some more uh, larger aspects of the game. So if you look at this content here, we have the first about the resource management, because that's a huge part of this real-time strategy game. And we're going to talk about the snowball effect, how to play efficiently, some bit about the combat. I'm thinking about doing a separate combat tutorial, but we will talk about the combat and then about surviving the last wave. So let's get to it. Let's start with the resources. So this guide is supposed to be for beginner intermediate players. And you need to know your resources in this game. And what do we need? mean with resources? Well, we have the basic resources. So the game tells you about these. We have the good old gold, wood, stone, iron and oil. We also have some kind of upkeep resources in colonists, workers, food and power. And this works. I mean, the only resource I care about here is gold, more or less. But uh, all of them are important in some way or another. I want to talk about some more macro resources. We are, I want to talk about the fact that we have some hidden resources as well. That might be even more important. We have time as the most important resource in this game. If we had infinite time, this game would be super easy. It even tells you that because you can choose to play more days and your score will get lower. Your score multiplier will get lowered. Because time is the most important resource in the game, in my opinion. Right? The next one is space. And that's also something I think that many beginners don't think about. But space is really important. In this game, you can even research higher tech buildings that are less efficient for how much they cost. The only thing they do better than your basic buildings are the fact that they take less space. Less space also means that you will have um, a large or a smaller need for a large defensive force. So space is super important. Keep that in mind, and that's what you're going to struggle with. Expanding, getting more space in as short amount of time as possible. You have defense. This is an interesting resource because it can come from the map in forms of choke points that will help your defense resource. But you can also build walls, you can build towers. Or you can send your troops on patrol to act as a defense resource. Of course, you also have the offensive resource, the resource of your army. It's a really versatile resource. And this is something you use in order to get more space. And in order to reinforce your defense during waves. So the offensive resource is what you kind of want to use your time and space resources into making, make a strong army. And then last, we have some kind of tech level. The more tech you have, the easier you will have to crank out the other resources. You will have more leverage for getting, if you have uh, an engineering center, you can build stronger units or you can build stronger towers stronger walls with better technology. 
Now, why are we speak, speaking about these resources? Well, it's because it's really important that you balance them. As a beginner, you will usually cap different resources. And that's bad, but I mean, that's obviously bad. And wasting resources, that's not rocket science. What's important is that you know that you want to balance these, because if you build too many sawmills, as an example, you might not have enough gold to actually build anything with all that wood. That's a pretty basic one. So you make sure that you are balancing resources. In the early game, you will need a bunch of gold and a bunch of wood. In the mid game, you start to want to have more stone. So then the balance will be different. And then in the late game, you want iron, you want oil as well. And you want defenses, but in the early game you want to have an army. In the early game you want to have 20 stone so you can build your solar center. And that's about it. You are not going to build 20 quarries in the early game. Makes no sense. So make sure that you're balancing your resources. This also goes for your uh, and army versus your other resources. How much money do you want to spend on your army versus building farms and building houses so you can get more gold later on as a rule of thumb you can just say well the balance is to get as much gold as possible everything everything else is secondary and you're kind of right one important part with the fact that we have these resources is the fact that you can balance them between each other by trading so We've been speaking about, um, talking about like 15-ish resources, but you can switch, you can trade between each other. So in this example, we can say that, well, let's say we have a bunch of space. That's usually the early game, have a bunch of space. You can use that in order to, as an example, build housing. The housing will use that space and some gold to produce um, gold workers and colonists from food space and power and gold from your housing gold is super versatile you can use it for anything well it's actually used for everything in the game i think anything that doesn't cost gold i don't, I don't think so but you can trade your space your space gold and food and some power for more gold and workers. But that's not everything. You can almost trade between all of these resources. Let's say you build um, a really strong army. That means you can use your offensive strength to secure more space and maybe use some of that offensive strength to actually put like a couple of snipers on defense on the new space. Suddenly you have used some of your offensive capabilities to buy essentially space and also some defenses. We can always trade between these guys and that's important to know that you need to balance them but you do have the tools to actually trade between them and it's not only going to the market. But again, gold is the most important resource you can uh, gather. So you can never go wrong with gold. One thing with the resources are that the ma maps actually pay or makes a huge impact here because some of the maps have more resources, <laughs> more of some resources than other. Like, so as an example, we can talk about the first map, the Moorland. And that one is interesting because it gives you a lot of defenses, a lot of choke points with all the forest, all the cliffs, all the water. 
and the forest and the water also gives you a lot of food in the early game before you even have farms. The problem is that it doesn't give you a lot of space. But it's a really good starting map because it helps you with the defenses at the expense of your economy more or less because you don't have enough space. When you get to the second map which is the peaceful lowlands you have plenty of space instead and you have plenty of grassland but you will lose on the defense resource. You will have to spend food and, and food and space to build a strong economy that you can afford to build stronger defenses than on more land where you got some of the choke points free. And then you get to the frozen highlands that has kind of a small defense positive because zombies get slower or soldiers get slower as well but hey they are ranged so who cares. You also have some lacking food and the power situation there because there is not a bunch of grassland. And then the last map, the only positive thing with that is it's the last map because it's garbage. Um, on that map you will have a problem with food, you will have a problem with space because you will have enemies everywhere. You also have some problem with the time because clearing enemies takes a while. And the defense is really difficult to def defend on that map because of the noise you're making. Or well, the fact that they have a multiplier on their aggro range, they will attack you from further away. So that's important to note. Maybe if you're a beginner you haven't really gotten to all of these maps, but they will require some changes in your strategy. That's why like I said, I'm not going for this. This is the build order. This is this, this, this. Do this. I want you to take a step back and think about stuff. Use that brain. Uh, the second chapter is about snowballing. Snowballing is so important in this game. This is about getting the strongest possible start. So you need to always be ahead of the curve. So what we mean by that is the fact that the zombies will get stronger and stronger, they will send stronger and stronger waves against you. Do you want to keep ahead of this curve? You want to be stronger than the zombies at all times. And the best way of getting ahead of the curve is to get a good start. And this game works by you putting your resources into things that give you more resources so it's kind of double dipping on itself it's kind of an exponential growth because you're always spending resources to get more resources which gives you kind of this graph we have the blue line being our colony strength and the red line being our zombie strength over time this is just a sketch i did but what you will find is that you are always making more and more income and it will grow faster and faster because you can be so efficient at putting your economy into building a better economy all the time but sooner or later you, it will start to get slower it can because you have cleared the map you have taken every single uh, oil field on a map or something like that so you won't get as much stronger as before but it can also be because you are starting to prepare your defenses against the last wave so instead of building a stronger economy you are just pushing yourself to build a strong army or a strong defense so you will lose some of your progress in the late game while the zombie attacks gets stronger and stronger and the last wave is ridiculous strong compared with everything before so usually you will end up with a situation where you are not as strong as the zombies the last wave you will be fighting a bit of a losing battle if you aren't well then you don't need any tips so <laughs> get uh, get out of here um, but that's the idea if you can get this um, curve up as quick as possible 
you will be having an easy time staying ahead of the zombies. And the biggest part of that is to learn the early game. Here comes your build orders and stuff. Learn the early game. You also want to make sure that um, everything you do here is greedy because if you're losing this game you want to lose at day five you don't want to lose five days you don't want to lose on the last wave because you wasn't playing greedy enough in the early game if you're losing five days in just to start i'm i'm not going to judge you but you need to learn some early game stuff like build orders you need to realize that well I'm going to need an army, so I'm going to need a solar center. I'm going to need some technologies. I'm going to need a and uh, a wood workshop. Things like mayors will impact this map, will impact this. But when you start the game, you also need to make sure that you are prioritizing the correct resources. Gold is always correct. Wood is really important in the early game for this. Uh, wood workshop and later on the farm like i said get that snowball rolling getting larger and larger by getting some early farms getting an early army that can push forward to farmland as an example you need to realize how the noise works in the game this is more important on like certain maps but that, that your soldiers will be pulling more enemies because they are louder than your rangers so learn to utilize that, learn how noise works. You don't have to know exactly how it works, but at least get a feel for it. And then learn how to hit, handle the waves when they will attack and how much you need to defend. So as a rule of thumb for beginners, I would say like, okay, you might want to wall off against the first wave. You want to have maybe I guess the first wave that's about 14 days in on the normal difficulty right now I would say well go for a double wall and for a second wave maybe a double wall and the ballista and that's your early game secured you don't need much more than that so for <laughs> intermediate players you you most likely know how much you need. You don't really need any walls. No big deal. Um, the third part is about playing efficient. Now, this is mostly based upon planning. So, everything you do in this game needs to have a reason. Don't just do random stuff. It's a strategy game. You need a strategy, you need tactics, so you can't just play by ear, you need to think what do I want to achieve, how will I be able to balance my resources as much as possible, what resource am I lacking now, which resource, resource will I be lacking in the next wave. So one common thing here is the expansion. Because I see beginners play the game and they start it up and uh, then they lose because they have a worthless, worthless economy. And then they think, oh, I need to expand. They start the game up again and then they expand like crazy, put down Tesla towers everywhere, pushing forward with some kind of army. and. That's expanding without a plan. You need to utilize the area you are liberating. If you just expand and put down Tesla towers without any other buildings, you're just wasting time and money on the upkeep on the Tesla towers. Your army is doing stuff that it might not be needing right now. You should focus on expanding for resources you want. Now, you could say, well, I need to get uh, 
skills on my units. I want to get to veteran status. And that's fine. I mean, that's a plan. Killing zombies to get uh, veteran soldiers. That's a plan. I'm fine with that. But have some kind of idea why you're doing stuff. Are you expanding to get food or getting to a choke point? Or are you expanding in order to get kills on your soldiers? Always have a plan. Always have a reason for something. And don't be afraid of changing your plan either. Like if you're pushing towards a grassland and then you run into a doom village, maybe you want to change your plan. Maybe you want to expand somewhere else or you want, want to build a stronger army so you can actually deal with the doom, doom village. So plan, plan, plan. Um, same thing here with the army. You need to play efficiently, which means don't let your units die. That's a basic one, but also, more importantly, don't let your army be idle, because that's just a waste of resources. You want to always be using your army for something. Pushing forward in order to give you some more space or give you some certain resources. Utilize your army. And then lastly, I want to talk about upkeep as well, because this is an interesting one, I think, because I'm, I'm not that concerned with upkeep in a way. There are some intermediate players that are like, well, ballistas costs 15 gold upkeep, so I'm not going to build any ballistas. Yeah, that's true, but if that ballista will make you secure enough, to build uh, like a couple more houses, certain, suddenly that ballista is actually making you money. So you have to be careful with the upkeep problem because, again, if you have a plan, if you have a reason to put the ballista there, if you put the ballista there in order to secure a position where you have, let's say, four snipers defending and you say well we can put the ballista here instead and suddenly that ballista costs less upkeep than those four snipers that you can bring into your army and clear the map faster so upkeep is a double-edged sword and then you have other things like uh, the tier 2 buildings that are inefficient money-wise but efficient in the in space um, as an example, the, um, the mill, the advanced mill, costs quite a lot in upkeep. So at those points, it might be more efficient to just secure more space for ordinary mills instead of trying to upgrade every mill to an advanced mill because that upkeep is getting ridiculous. You also have executor towers. That costs 50 bucks upkeep. That's also pretty much. Uh, you could go for just a ballista in most cases until the late game and save a bunch of gold that way. So, upkeep is not always bad, but there are some pitfalls like getting executors too early, upgrading every single building to tier 2. That might bite you in the ass. When you're behind, I mean. Then we have combat. Like I said, I almost want to be, make a, a separate video about this, but combat is, in this game is quite important. And let's touch upon it a little bit. Uh, you need to know your units. Know their strength and weakness. Now, in the current game, you only need to learn three different units because you only need to learn reindeers, snipers, and thanatos because that's the only ones you need if you're going to play the meta game. But this game, I mean, it's a game, it's supposed to be fun, so you can build whatever units you want. Like, I'm really trying to make the Lucifer's work, I might never make it, but that's my problem. Um, and this will most likely change in patches as well, so. Learn your units. 
and some of the things are really obvious but as an example you have the a veterancy of the infantry that if you get your rangers your snipers or soldiers leveled up they get more or less twice as strong offensively that's a huge deal veteran snipers that's how you do, how you win the game that's a lot of damage per second but also a really early unit but then you also have these kind of hidden strengths and weaknesses so here's an example of the health regeneration of a lucifer versus a sniper so lucifer is getting 40 hit points every five seconds the sniper is getting three hit points every five seconds so lucifer has a redonkulous regeneration it doesn't say that in the game anywhere but that's a strength that might be useful in a later patch when you want to have a bruiser that can take some damage or you want to have you can just build two lucifers and have them swap around because they will have such a high health region so they can actually do some tanking but then again the lucifers are the only unit with friendly fire so usually it's not worth it i really want to make them work but they're worthless but like i said if you want to go for the meta gaming you just want to have rangers that make no noise you want and are really strong in the early game and cheap and you want to have um, your uh, snipers to deal with anything else and then you can have your thanatos for defense in the late game like i said it's a game it's supposed to be fun so use the, whatever units you want mm. a bit more important is to actually know your enemy so in the early game you will be fighting these two guys, it's the walkers and the runners. Uh, not that much to say about this, but this is usually what your rangers can deal with. They will be able to deal with these basic zombies, no problems at all. Um, especially if they are leveled up to veterans. Beginners might run into trouble when they are fighting the infected executive, because these guys look pretty similar to all the other zombies, but are much, much stronger, and they might cut, catch you off, off guard. And when you're starting to fight these guys, you might want to look at getting some snipers into the action. The more advanced zombies, though, you will find the shabby one, with 600 hit points. And uh, he's going to kick your ass if you only have Lucifer's. As an example, they are really good against Lucifers, but everything is good against Lucifers. Who cares? Um, the thing here is that infected shabbies get countered by snipers, and you will mostly have snipers. Interesting. Um, another thing to say about the first tiers to on top there is the fact that the veteran soldier will be able to two shot those guys, so even if soldiers make a lot of noise if you get into veteran they will be shooting less bullets to kill the zombies so they might actually make less noise a bit of a sidetrack let's go back we have the infected venom this is the only ranged zombie in the game right now and this is the one that will cause you the most headache most likely because they have the range and this is the reason why you usually end up with snipers because if you have rangers or soldiers you will need to micro them in order to not take damage from venoms and uh, always keeping an eye on your army is tiresome so it's easier to just use your snipers and uh, use the range advantage to kill them and then we also have the infected harpy super fast super high damage per second and they also can jump over walls now these are the only unit that's faster than your rangers and they will 
almost one shot the reindeer. You might th say that well they are ranger counters, but not really. Because a reindeer will survive with one hit point because they have 60 hit points and one armor. So they will actually survive with one hit point. They actually make for decent harpy tanks because they're fast enough to only take one hit most likely. But the thing is you want to uh, look at these enemies and your army and notice how the progression and the, your power peaks works. So in the beginning you will have to fight normal zombies and push your boundaries forward. And that's a situation where you usually only have a couple of rangers, a dozen of rangers, pushing through normal zombies and runners without much, much of a problem. That's your first power peak, and you can push decently safe. Your second power peak is when you have an army strong enough to deal with any doom villages, even if they are getting a couple of advanced zombies like uh, spitters, harpies, chubbies. That's your mid-range army. And then you have your last power peak when you have an army strong enough to deal with almost anything. So we are talking about more than 30 snipers and some advanced units. That's the timing when you have an army that can deal with more than just villages. And then it's all about clearing the map. So you start the game, you get to the power power peak when you have your army that can actually deal with the normal zombies and then you have an army that can deal with villages and most other stuff so you can push forward to strategic positions you actually want to grab and in late game you have a strong enough army that can clear anything and it's all about clearing the map as fast as possible also a small note about the waves not much to say here really, but you make sure that you always have an army or defense strong enough to deal with the waves. So just make sure that you can deal with them from any uh, spawn location. Always have some kind of walls so you can bring your army back in time. Usually, usually you have your army clearing at one side of the map, so that one is usually secured. But then you also have to be able to fall back into any other position as well. Just make sure that you have a keep an eye out for that timer. Now let's talk about the last wave because this is what the game is all about: surviving the last wave. And there are a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, let's make sure that we clear the map as much as possible because that will reduce the amount of zombies on the map. Maybe more importantly is to plan early because at a certain point building economy will uh, not pay for itself. It will start to be like, um, what should we say? You get uh, less and less return on investment. So you need to start building your defenses at some point. And you don't want to start building them too late. That's, that's the thing. You want to start building them uh, like two waves before the last wave. So about uh, 20 days before the last wave, you want to at least start building your defenses. And you can plan your defenses even earlier, so you can find your choke points even before that. So if you notice that, oh, this is a really good choke point and it doesn't give me any resources, well, prepare that choke point with walls and stuff. Because walls is one of the only ways that you can actually buy time in this game, and time is the most important resource. And they cost no upkeep. So... When building your defenses against the last wave, you want to start with the things that doesn't cost upkeep, like stone walls. 
put down as many stone walls as you can as early as possible. You don't want to start with executors because they will cost a bunch of upkeep. But put down walls because you can never have too many walls. And last but not least, AoE, area of effect damage. That's what you're going to need against the last wave. So you need to have this is the reason why Thanatos is so popular, because that would be the best way of taking care of the last wave. If for some reason you play without Thanatos, or you don't have enough oil, or you don't have enough technology, or whatever, then you have to find another way of dealing with AoE. So you might need to build um, shocking towers. They do a lot of AoE, but they usually get sniped by Venoms. Um, or you can use executive no executor executor well the tier 2 ballista they have some AOE without costing oil but you need to have a solution for area effect if you don't have tech and you don't have oil well put down freaking traps then you need to get something down, down that actually deals with AOE in my opinion So that's my thought process on how to master their billions. Um, first and foremost, make sure that you balance your resources and make sure that you understand that time and space are important resources in this game. Other than that, you can just go for gold because it's such a versatile resource and you can Trade the resources between each other. Use gold to build an army. You can use an army to clear space. You can use space to get food and money or food. And then you can use food to get housing. And then you can use housing to get gold and gold to build an army that can give you space. And you get that economy rolling. And in the early game, play greedy. Get the snowball, snowball rolling. As I said, you want to lose at day 5 instead of day 95. You need to get ahead of the curve. And if your economy is lacking, you can always play efficiently. So don't lose units if you don't have to. Always make sure that you're using your time for something. Plan ahead. Plan, do expansions based on what you're actually needing. Like... I need to grab food or I need to grab the stone. Always have a plan and try to execute that. Also, you need to learn a combat. Learn about um, fighting different kind of enemies. Like I said, it's not really that interesting because it's only three units that are valid right now. So, still pretty important. Um, and prepare for the last wave in time, because that's the end in the game. Survive the last wave. And that's it. We're also going to talk about some bonus tips here. Just because reasons. Um, the first one is noise. Let's talk about noise a bit. Uh, because that's not something that's explained very good in the game. But how it works is that most of the things generate noise in the game. The most obvious one is units attacking. Different units will have different noise values. Rangers are very quiet. Soldiers make a lot of noise. And the Thanatos makes... Ooh, yeah. <laughs> he, he makes the noise. Let's just say that. Um, but also buildings like... Ballistas will make noise. And executors will make noise. Zombies attacking also making noise and one of the most common ways to lose the game is to have buildings getting infected and that will make enough noise that it will pull more enemies than you can handle usually so noise is important mechanic now noise will dissipate over time so if you have your army attacking from one location, they will generate a lot of noise and that will aggro zombies towards that location. 
you can then just move your army to another location and start attacking from that location in order to let the noise from the first location dissipate. So learn how to utilize noise in this game and you will be set for at least map 4 because map 4 is all about noise generation in my opinion. And pooling is a thing that's kind of kind of uh, connected to noise because pulling means that you can pick your fights you can use a ranger run up and find some zombies aggro them get them pulled back to your either defenses or your the rest of your army and fight them over there the benefit of this is not only will you be able to choose how much you want to fight your noise generation will be further back so you will pull less enemies when you are actually fighting the ones you brought back with the ranger and you will most likely fight them from a safer location since you're pulling back you will also have them all the zombies attacking from the front instead if you push forward with your army into darkness and start attacking and making a bunch of noise you can attack get attacked from all sides at the same time and just get swarmed so pulling pretty important to learn especially on map number four and another thing is kiting so you have ranged weapons so you should use this to your advantage kiting is about usually using a ranger to run around zombies so they will be chasing a ranger while your other units are killing the horde. Now that's really useful in the early game especially because you might not have enough units that can handle uh, the amount of zombies that one wave generates and the amount of noise that wave generates when they start hitting your walls. So not only do you uh, save some hit points on your walls by kiting, you also make sure that you're not pulling too much because of less noise being generated. You can also use kiting to pull your um, pull a wave towards your more fortified positions. So there are a lot of ways to use kiting. But like I said, it's mostly used for um, keeping a wave occupied while you take them out from afar. So you don't have to make too much noise or lose buildings and the walls from them attacking it. So strategy that works pretty well, I would say. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, oh yeah this was a one i added as well redundancy because like i was talking about before i think i didn't but it's a common thing i see that intermediate players stop building walls and they are like well i got unlucky because this zombie attacked one tent and then more and more tents got attacked and then I lost. I was unlucky because um, maybe I had a ranger patrolling there but she was busy fighting at the other uh, end of the patrol just when this guy infected the tent. Well, that's why you need redundancy in a way. Like, it might have been unlucky but could you have done something differently? You could have had your ranger patrolling a smaller area if you had more rangers. Or you could have put what's called a scratching pole when you put down a single wall in front of your um, buildings in order to have the zombies attack that wall instead of affecting a tent as an example. Could you have done something else? And the optimal way of playing this game 
it's not building walls everywhere. It's not building safe. Not about building double laid walls everywhere, but sometimes redundancy is worth it. Having a layer defense might save your colony. At day five, it doesn't matter. Like I said, you can just restart. But when you get later into the game, you don't want to have a single mistake screw you over. So, building a small wall or like 50 gold and uh, some wood, is that an optimal play? No. But it might make it easier to play the game especially if you're playing with no pause or something like that make sure that you're not in this trap where you're like well that was unlucky well you're going to make some mistakes when you play so make sure that you have some kind of safety for that putting down a small wall in the Bigger things, it's not that expensive. Like, just do it. You can also destroy it for half the price back. Like, it's really useful. So, I, I think that's about it. Um, like I said, this was not about uh, trying to um, give you exact tips on how to play the game, this was more about trying to explain my thought process when I play the game. That I want to balance my resources. I want to always have a plan what I'm doing. I, I want to play efficiently with my army. And I know that this is not the way everyone will play the game. I don't think this is the best way of playing the game. But like I said, it's more about how I'm thinking about the game and it's also in my opinion a pretty good idea to take a step back and think about this because we will have patches in this game that will change a bunch of stuff we might even make the lucifers valid actually hp region might be fine and it's also a bit like some of the tactics works on lower difficulties so or if you have certain uh, challenges like for example if you go for well i don't want to build any walls and maybe lucifer's acting as walls is a valid strategy but anyways thank you guys for watching this video it's been way too long <laughs> but yeah this was my thoughts about uh, their billions great game buy it all that good stuff and i will see you again next time Goodbye.